In this video we'll go over how to install the PassBolt Password Manager on Ubuntu 22.04 inside AWS. Over the past year I've started looking at alternatives to LastPass due to recent breaches. I was looking for something inexpensive and I also wanted more control over my password manager. PassBolt offers both with their community edition. If you are not a Linux person, no worries, you won't need Linux experience to get this installed and running. I'll walk you through each step. Let's get started. First, we'll log in to the AWS console. If you don't have an AWS account you can create one from the login page. You'll need to bring up the EC2 dashboard so if you're not already there type it in the search box in your AWS console. Next, choose Launch Instances, that's the term AWS uses to create a virtual machine. Give your instance a name, this is just the display name in the AWS console. Then choose Ubuntu under Quick Start. You'll see that it defaulted to Ubuntu Server 22.04, which is the one we want. Now we'll choose the instance type. Since Passbolt requires 2 GB of RAM and 2 processors we'll choose T3.small. Next we'll create a key pair so we can remotely access our Ubuntu instance. Go ahead and click create new key pair. We'll keep the defaults. Oh guess we do need to name it. Then choose create key pair. We are going to create a new security group and open ports 443 for web access and port 80 for our SSL registration and renewal. SSH is already open. We'll limit access to that later. Now let's set the disk type and size. The default type is GP2, but we'll change it to GP3 which is about 10% cheaper. We'll up the disk size to 30 gigabytes. Let's also encrypt the disk and use the default KMS key. All set. Let's launch the instance. Success! Our instance has now been created. It will start automatically. Let's check the settings and specifically the public IP address. I'm using AWS root 53 for my domain record so I'll create an A record using this new public IP address. I already have an A record for my Passbolt server so I'll just change the public IP address and save the record. While our DNS record propagates we'll download and install PuTTY so we can access our new instance. When you install PuTTY it also installs a tool called PuTTY Gen, this will allow us to convert the key pair we created. First choose load and grab the PEM file we downloaded when we generated the key pair.
It's a good idea to set the passphrase, but since this is only a demonstration we'll skip that step and save the private key. Okay, time to get Putty set up. Let's launch Putty. We're going to import the key we just created using Putty Gen. Let's give our session a name so we can save our settings. We need to go back and save the public DNS name from our AWS console. Let's paste that into the hostname field. We also need to add Ubuntu its symbol in front of that. Hit save then open so we can get to our SSH session. Great, we've now remoted into our Ubuntu instance. Now we need to update any packages that are already installed on Ubuntu by running sudo apt upgrade. No packages to upgrade so now we need to set a password for the root user, I'll explain why later. Make sure the password is complex. Let's now set the hostname with sudo hostname ctl set dash hostname. This step is not required, I just like to have it set. Next let's set the time zone. Again, this isn't required. Type in sudo time date ctl set dash time zone and the time zone you're in. Now we need to find out what our public IP is so we can limit SSH access. Copy it so we can paste it in the AWS security group settings. Let's paste the public IP address into the SSH line. You'll notice it added slash 32 to the end of it. That's to restrict access to only that IP address. Once you hit save rules, the change is active. Now we'll go back to the SSH session and paste in the commands required to install Passbolt. I'll have all of the steps listed in the description below. Before we go any further we need to verify our DNS record is live for the SSL setup with Let's Encrypt. Let's grab the public IP and check it at mxtoolbox.com. Perfect. Now we can proceed.
choose yes to create an empty database for our Passbolt storage. If you remember from earlier I told you we would need the root login. This is to create the database, and the root password for the MySQL admin password. I'm using the default database username, but you can call this whatever you like. Now create a password for the database username. Now name the database. I went with the default. Choose yes to configure Nginx. We're going to use Let's Encrypt to auto-generate our free SSL certificate so choose Auto and hit OK. Go ahead and type in the fully qualified domain name for your Passbolt server. This is the DNS name you assigned earlier. Type in a working email address so Let's Encrypt can send you notifications. Server setup is now complete. Now let's move to the browser to configure Passbolt. Type in the fully qualified domain name you used earlier. Click Get Started button and make sure all of the setup areas are green. Click on Start Configuration. Since the database is running on the same server we'll enter 127.0.0.1 for database connection. Enter the database admin username and password you created earlier and enter the database name. Click Next. Provide a server name. It doesn't need to be Passbolt like I have here and enter a valid email address. Click Next. OpenPGP relies on the time of both your Passbolt server and the computer you're using for setup. This error can occur if either time is off. In this case the time on my local laptop is a few minutes off so I had to manually change it. If you get the same error hit next after making the time change which should take you to the screen. This is where you'll set up your SMTP server. I used a free service from SendGrid. Make sure you send a test email before proceeding. Now you'll need to set up yourself as the first user. Enter your information and hit next. Now we'll download and install the Passbolt extension for Chrome. Passbolt provides extensions for other browsers like Edge and Firefox. Now enter a passphrase you can remember. This is what you'll use to log in to the Passbolt portal and when your Passbolt session expires. Make sure you save the recovery kit file someplace that you can access it. If you forget your passphrase and don't have this recovery kit you're out of luck. Now enter a combination of three letters or number and choose a color. This is to protect you against email phishing attempts. We've made it to the administration dashboard. This is going to look a little different for users. They won't have the administration and users tab at the top.
I'm going to set the Passbolt extension so it's always visible on the browser bar. Time to test out Passbolt. I've created an account with Talent LMS. Let's try saving our login credentials to Passbolt. You'll need your passphrase from earlier if you haven't logged in. And there you go. We've saved our first login credentials to Passbolt. You should see Talent LMS listed in the Passbolt portal now. If you have a bunch of credentials you would like to import you can use the import button. This made it very easy for me to import my credentials from LastPass to Passbolt. In this video we created an Ubuntu server running on AWS. We prepared the server then ran the necessary commands to install Passbolt. Next we configured Passbolt from the browser and tested it. I've added all of the steps we used to get Passbolt working in the description below. I hope this video was helpful. If it was please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you.